Hey, Kiki and Kibitz listeners, the Below Deck guys are back for a special event. Today, we interview Chief Stu, Daisy Kelleher. Now, Sean, as arguably the number one pro Daisy podcast on the internet, how ecstatic were we to be able to talk to Daisy? First off, we definitely are the number one pro Daisy podcast. But yeah, absolutely honored. I feel like all three of us are best friends now, right? I mean, especially since she agreed to do it during a workday for her. Amazing. So really could not have asked for a better first interview for us. You know, Sean, mm-hmm. I know I love learning more about her background at sea, as well as got some insight as to what has been an amazing below deck season. If there's anyone I hope is part of this below deck franchise for years to come, it's Daisy. Without further ado, let's jump into the interview. Hey, Daisy. Daisy, how are you? How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm John. This is Sean. I know we've communicated a little bit via Twitter, I think. So um, looks like you're on a boat. Where are you coming in from today? Yeah, I am. I'm in Palma. I'm working. Well, I'm supposed to be working right now. So, <laughs> oh, so you're on charter right now? <laughs> no, but I just snuck away to my cabin. We're just in the shipyard, just getting the boat ready for, yeah, for our season. So yeah, we're starting in a few weeks. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, below deck sailing yachts seem to be, you know, from my perspective, I, I thought the yachting world really shut down, but it seems like, you know, certain countries are able to, you know, create their own bubble, essentially. Um, is that um, what happened? Um, it did shut down for a few months. I think um, a lot of owners got scared and, and let off, you know, I think it was more financial reasons they let that it shut down rather than travel restriction. Um, you know, I think people didn't know how the world was going to be affected financially. So they laid off, you know, across the board as many kind of labor they could. And obviously, you know, their holiday home, that was the first place where they cut out, you know, got rid of a lot of people and a lot of, you know, uh, pay decreases, things like that. But it only, that only lasted a few months and then it quickly realized that the world wasn't going to financially crash the way it was expected. Um, right. Yeah. So it kind of opened up pretty quickly. I mean, rich people are always going to find a way to get to their boats. So yeah. that, yeah, that was really the only reason why it was affected was money, not really because of travel restrictions. You know, some people moved onto their boat and just live in their boat permanent permanently. Um, yeah, some people are going to green zone countries, you know, different things, but they're finding a way to use their boats. It's, yeah, the yachting industry is back back to normal. Well, that's that's great to hear. And, you know, Daisy, thanks again for, you know, being part of the show today. You know, so Sean and I, you know, we, we host a Kiki and Kibitz podcast that, you know, goes for different Bravo shows. And, uh, you know, Sean and I have been, you know, avid lovers of Below Deck for, you know, years now. And we just, we, we're a very pro Daisy podcast. We'll tell you that. And, I have uh, listened to a few episodes. I listened oh, to the recent one today. So oh, oh, good, <laughs> oh, that's good. the reason I agreed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so, you know, we just love having you on the show and we just love to get some background, just learn a little bit more about you. Um, oh. So we'd love to hear, you know, kind of how you got started in yachting. You know, is it a, is it a full-time gig for you or is it just during certain seasons that you do it? Uh, yeah, so I've been doing this nine years this month. Um, I, you know, went and studied hotel management um, from encouragement from my dad. He was a yachty and, uh, you know, he, he encouraged me to go into yachts. But as an 18 year old, I was like, oh, that sounds rubbish. I had no, I thought it was like the Navy or something. I don't think I really <laughs> understood. Um, and then, you know, I went to London for two years and I wasn't very happy. And he kind of said it again. And I was like, actually, that sounds kind of cool. So I went down to Antibes and got my first job and I've been doing it pretty consistently for the last nine years, except for the last year. This has been the, the longest I haven't gone working and um, mainly because of COVID and then because I broke my arm. But yeah, I work mainly permanently. I've worked on two boats for three years, about six years, another boat for over a year and then a couple of seasonal, but major- majority, <laughs> normally I'll just go with normally I prefer to work in a boat full time uh, I like the structure I like the family environment the consistency so yeah this is pretty much home for me definitely so like during a typical year how often are you on a charter 
it, it, you know, every boat, it varies. My boats, I would say I would average kind of maybe four to six months of guest trips. Maybe, maybe more towards four, six months okay. would be the year, but um, yeah, probably averaging about four months, maybe we'll go with four. That's, that's fantastic. And it's nice to see, you know, even after, you know, we're not really fully out of COVID, but that's great to see that, you know, you've been, a- been able to get onto multiple charters here. Um, so, uh, you know, Daisy, it sounds like you have a, you know, a story background. Um, do you have one maybe like, and it doesn't have to be the season that, you know, is airing on TV at all, but do you have any, like a, like a biggest horror story from your yachting career? Um, I don't, you know, I don't think so. I think, uh, I've been kind of lucky that, you know, it's everyone's never had any injuries or anything like that, or any, you know, to be honest, the crash and blow deck was probably um, one of the most hectic things I've experienced. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some some pretty crazy weather I've been through, some bad storms. Regarding guest requests and stuff, again, you know, when you kind of are in the service industry, you kind of expect anything. So nothing just seems that crazy. You're, you're kind of in the moment, you're kind of like, this is pretty abnormal. But when you've done it as long as I have, you're like, yeah, this is just the same crazy crap that we have to deal with all the time. Uh, you know, and some of the guests maybe on Below Deck, probably Below Deck in general was probably the most um, kind of obscure stuff I've seen. I work for pretty low key kind of normal people. So, mm-hmm. but in general, I haven't seen anything too crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you were never on a boat that like capsized or anything, but yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'd still be here. I'd probably be pretty traumatized. So yeah. hopefully I've never um, had any to, any bad experiences. Sure, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I know you mentioned, you know, not having anything, you know, too crazy happen while you're on the boat. You know, is the Paris Fall 3 crew the wildest crew you've ever, ever been a part of? Um, ooh. I... No, I don't think so. I think the way we behaved was, and um, what I experienced wasn't that abnormal. I think what differs on Parsifal is that on a normal boat, you might hire a few introverts to kind of balance out the, the dynamics. But this was unusual in the sense that we were all extroverts. So that was what was quite intense about the situation. And also, I think the scenarios that happened were normal as well. But again, Again, the kind of, you might have that over a year, whereas that intense over kind of six weeks was, you know, a bit bizarre. And I think a lot of that has to do with a number of different reasons, but also because we're only there for six weeks. I work on my boats full time, so I can't Mm -hmm. just hook up with anyone I want to. Like, I care about my job. So if I want to be there for the year, you know, you can't start behaving like that. Maybe four or five months down the line when you really like someone, um, but I feel like these in, these relationships escalated because they're like, well, we're leaving anyway. It doesn't, you know, I can't really get fired, essentially. Well, you know, essentially. Um, so I think that kind of factored into it. But overall, it, yeah, it was, I was a bit like, what the hell is happening? But, <laughs> you know, I think they were generally normal people. I just think it was because they knew they were leaving. So they're like, to hell with it whereas I don't think that would have happened if we were all permanently on that boat I think they would have been a lot more subdued because yeah the consequences right. are, are greater when you have to live with that person for a longer period of time right yeah I was gonna say it's definitely the wildest crew in the history of the show I mean but I guess it makes uh, sense for me you know I watched the show as well and I have to say sometimes I didn't really get it I was like why are they, why aren't they, why are they going home? Like the last one, you know, with Francesca and stuff, like it, that, that I find that more unusual than our crew. Right. Yeah. Like, like yes, yeah. that was, I don't know why they did that. I don't know if, um, you know, they were conscious of being fit. I, I, I think it's a bit to do with your leaders. So I think if you're, if your leaders party, then your peers will follow. So I think Eddie and Francesca kind of set the tone on that and that kind of made them a bit more subdued. And whereas I think because me and Gary, 
like to party that kind of made everyone else encouraged or feel comfortable but I actually think the way we partied is a lot more normal for yachties than what I've seen in other um, below decks definitely yes entertaining seasons very entertaining seasons so far uh, speaking of Gary I love every interaction between you and Gary <laughs> I think you guys are like I know you kind of go after each other but you're you're so funny together yeah um me and Gary you know my friend texted me the other day and she's like I'm pretty sure you fancy each other I'm like uh, no I'm like I can't speak for Gary but I can speak for myself yeah we had you know um kind of a love-hate relationship I definitely think what what had actually happened was they at the beginning I didn't really trust Sydney but the two of them were coming at me with two different stories about everything about absolutely everything it would be like chalk and cheese yin and yang I was like I don't know who to believe it was really bizarre to you know it wasn't even like Chinese whispers it was like two completely different stories so after a while I kind of had to pick a side and I guess I wanted to just I just kind of assumed that Gary was being like you know a fuck boy or whatever and I kind of believed Sydney more and um, so I do think mine and Gary's relationship was slightly affected by uh, me just not really believe when you you'd be like days days I didn't do this and I'm like you're a liar you're a liar and so I think it was a little bit affected by that and also from there there definitely was a lack of teamwork you know I know everyone's like god Daisy needs so much help from the deck crew that's very very normal on a boat during charter it's just a rule you know JL's bitching about scrubbing the deep teak I don't know how many times I've come out and helped the deck crew scrub teak uh, like hundreds of times oh sorry let me see um hundreds of times and that's because that's the way it works when we're off charter the boys are busier and we help them when we're on charter the girls are busier so you're just seeing on charter you're not seeing all the downtime during a yard or an off period and gary knows that sorry oh yeah i gave it to willie Thank you so much. Sorry. All good. All good. <laughs> um, You're working. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Gary knows that. You know, the viewers might know that, but Gary does. So it's not that we, you know, at times, yeah, we did physically need the help, but it was more. Um, it's really demotivating. It's really unencouraging. It's. It's frustrating. There's a lot of things going on there. And that, you know, I massively struggled with Gary. And um, that's one thing when your junior crew do that. But when you're being led by your um, kind of superior, and Gary's been doing this for 12 years, this is not rocket science. And um, yeah, so me and Gary had a love hate relationship. Um, I like Gary. I don't think he's talking to me at the moment. That's his issue. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, whatever so yeah yeah absolutely and it it does seem like there's like a like a playful respect but at the same time you know like you got at the end of the day like and I know you've mentioned it you know multiple times throughout the season you're trying to have a successful charter and so you know whatever it takes and it definitely seems like this uh, this season the the charters are just packed with you know six to eight people like, I feel like I used to see on, you know, some of the other iterations of Below Deck, which, you know, is a bigger boat, bigger galley. Sometimes there's maybe only four to five people on a charter. Um, your season definitely seemed to be packed as far as having, you know, six, eight. I know when, when, when Barry was on, you know, he had, you know, eight, nine people on there. And I don't even know if the boat really supports that. You can, so every super yacht legally, it's a super yacht. You can have up to 12 guests. Anything over 12 becomes into a cruise ship. So we can physically actually fit 12 people, but that's, I mean, it is hectic. And it also depends on what the guests are asking for. So the reason with Gary, Barry's charter that it was so difficult was because it wasn't nine people's a lot, but it was more how much they were asking for. So the kids were drinking, you know, I mean, maybe like 12 Diet Cokes a day and they had to be in crystal glasses. The guys were <laughs> smashing the beers. 
But when you, you know, it's fine if you're at lunch and you're having three or four bottles of wine, that's easy. But when you're having multiple different frozen cocktails, a fresh um, crystal glass uh, for every beer, for every Diet Coke, that puts tremendous pressure. So it's not necessarily how many guests there were. It was more what they were asking for. Mm. So we, yeah, we were very labor heavy. And um, yeah, it was, it was difficult. It was frustrating. I definitely struggled with Natasha and Gary. They, um, and maybe with Gary, it comes off a bit more playful because I think me and Gary naturally have more in common. I think with work, you know, even though I love Natasha, I think me and Gary would actually be friends. So I think that's why that comes across on screen more. Whereas me and Natasha lacked chemistry, like, you know, as much as we respect and like each other, I don't think we'd necessarily be friends in the real world. And um, so that's maybe why that comes across on screen. But yeah, they, um, <clears throat> I don't know, they were, they were difficult to work with for sure. Uh, yeah, there, definitely there's, you and Gary have friendship chemistry. Never romantic, yeah. but there's a little friendship chemistry. Yeah, I on agree. Screen. Yeah. yeah, and I yeah. think yeah, that comes that comes out in the, in those kind of joking. Yeah, I think maybe you and Natasha, not so much, as you mentioned, obviously the relationship got off to a rocky start. It seems to, you know, obviously, you know, we're not working in real time, working with, you know, how the shows progressed. So it seems like, you know, um, even though like the last couple episodes haven't necessarily had, uh, you know, too many actual charter guests that, you know, Natasha's starting to find her sea legs a little bit, get used to the kitchen a little bit more. And, you know, it sounds like you've, you've figured out how to be the, the, the chief stew for you know the chef Natasha for how she works best yeah I think with the whole Natasha and Gary thing as well I, I felt like with Gary even though he, he was more two-faced well a lot more two-faced <laughs> I also feel like he I did see him kind of if I asked him to do something change whereas I think with Natasha she just wouldn't listen to anything I said so I think that's as well why I get was a bit kind of nicer to him and a bit more playful and lenient because he kind of go, okay, fine. And the next day I would see him actually helping. Whereas Natasha just never mm -hmm. did anything I ever said. So I was like, okay. So, and also with the annoying thing with Natasha is, you know, obviously I find a way to manage her. I'm not her manager. Chefs right. get more than me. I have to manage an interior team. I have to manage the crew and I have to manage the guests. I shouldn't have to manage a one person department. And I often find myself as Chief Stew that becoming my role. And I think by the time I got on Below Deck, I was a bit sick of it. I was a bit like, here we go, another chef that I have to manage. This is bullshit. Manage your own department and let me manage everything else going on in on the boat. And um that so that frustration is definitely there because of that. So in, I'm not actually Natasha's manager. She is supposed to manage herself. She does get paid more than me normally. I presume she got, got paid more than me in this as well. And yeah, I, I was annoyed. I was like, I, you know, and everyone's like, oh, well, now you find a way to manage her and work with her. And I'm like, she, she should have been doing that from the beginning. It shouldn't have to be me kind of tiptoeing around her and managing her, but that's my role. <laughs> yeah, you had to step up and you did. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, and then, uh, <clears throat> Daisy, so this is obviously, and I, I'm assuming this is like your first time on, you know, television. What's it like watching yourself on TV? How much do you pay attention to it? How much do you kind of, you know, let things go? Um, I actually don't mind the show at all. I actually hate listening to interviews I do I, I tend not to watch them and um, the show I don't mind it I think you know I think I'm pretty funny you know obviously there's a a few cringe moments like I've no like my voice annoys me I've noticed how much I say perfect all this kind of stuff and um, but overall you know I think I'm fine with my behavior I think it's exactly the way I expected I should have come across it's the way I've behaved for 33 years and um, nothing surprised me about what I did, what I said, the way I acted. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm okay 
with the show and I think it's pretty funny. I think it's actually gotten way funnier than, I don't know, oh, yeah. the producers or the editing. Yeah, like it's actually almost turning into a comedy now. Whereas I never found the other one so funny before. Uh, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fine with this. Yeah, hundred percent agree. I think you're a great point of view character for the show too this season. Like you feel like the main character, and if, even if you don't always have the most screen time, and you are, I think like you and Kate Chastain are just like great at talking to the camera, and like saying something funny. So I don't. That, I, that took a while. That um, that I think they. I was one of the hardest to interview. I really couldn't relax during the camera. And um, I hated that. Like I, I hated doing that. I found it very unnatural, very difficult. But then kind of as time went on and I got practice and um, I started, you know, relaxing and, and getting better at it. So mm. I'm glad it's coming out as funny because during the time I wasn't, I was like, oh, this is awful. But um, yeah, I guess it's my dry Irish humor that's kind of coming, coming out there. And I guess people are enjoying it. So uh, ab absolutely we love it uh and and daisy that actually that brings me to my next question so that interview process how I, i'm assuming that all happens at, at one time so is that you know maybe a couple sit downs or one sit down and uh, that's probably something i'm not allowed to discuss okay, okay. all good all Thanks. good i i always i always thought about how tough it must be to like cart cartmentalize like one scene one aspect when you've already gone through you know the whole season so anyway we'll leave that one where it is but my, I'll, I'll just still be thinking about it um and i had uh, no clue until i did the show either so it's yeah. clever but um yeah i suppose that's behind the scenes secrets that are yet to be disclosed not by me anyway i don't want to be in trouble <laughs> absolutely all good uh, and, uh, and and daisy tell me a little bit about because I, I see them some things come through on instagram um, tell me a little bit about the PETA party that you're a part of every week. Yeah, so um, we, it kind of started, I think Ali maybe or Danny kind of said it and was like, oh, what do you think if we do like a live or something like this? And I, I don't think we really kind of knew what the aim was, but I guess it was just to kind of keep our Instagrammers and things like that kind of interested and um, so we kind of discussed different platforms and should we do a YouTube, should we do this? And we're like, we're so bad at this stuff. Like the girls are doing really well. It's like, so we were like, okay, what about an IGTV series? That's like easy. So it kind of started there and it, you know, it was very natural to obviously talk about the program and our opinion and our feedback of what happened. And wow, yeah, it really took off. And um, people, we did not expect that. People are like hardcore pit of party fans. <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm like, my friends are always texting me like, when's it coming out? And I'm like, you listen to that? And they're like, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how it started. And yeah, people seem to really um, be enjoying it. And I guess in a way it's a kind of extended uh, version of the episode and um, you know, I like, I think people like to see kind of the girls united and kind of to see our opinion of the scenarios that happened. Um, it's quite weird be watching a show and not being able to defend yourself, you know, and the same on social media. You obviously can't fight back to, I mean, trolls or, you know, to people you have kind of um, very strong opinions because you're just encouraging them. But it's quite difficult not to. So this was a really nice way to to kind of stand up for ourselves or defend ourselves without feeding into um, specific people on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So um, I really like that aspect of it that I'm able to say, no, this is why I did this. It's not because, <laughs> you know, without kind of starting a Twitter war. So yeah, that's kind of how that came about. Um, yeah, it's great. I'm glad everyone's enjoying it. So yeah, I, th I think I've watched all of them and you guys do have like a great chemistry together. And it, it is refreshing this season that all the stews get along. Like, I don't, I think yeah. most seasons there's like tension there, but like, I love that, like, you kind of took Ali under, under your wing early on. And yeah, it was a big thing for me when I joined the show. And, you know, with the casting, which, you know, it's a, a form of interview, you know, I did, I treated it the way I would treat any interview. And, um, you know, I was very open and said, like, I will not cause drama with my girls. Like, and it was, you know, my kind of um, 
position of going into it was treating it like a real job and I'm like you know I was very open I was like if you don't want that if you want um a certain particular kind of girl or a particular kind of management style I'm not it that's fine I will not go on the show but like this is the way I run my department and I won't run it any differently and in nine years I've always gotten along with the girls that's what my job is you know I'm a girl's girl anyway um so I just very much ran it the way I'd run any boat and you know I hate conflict I hate um you know especially in your own department it's one thing if it's in another department but I couldn't imagine working with the stew you know and having that it just it's not going to work and you know with taking Ali under my wing well yeah she's green that's my job I'm You're right and she's green that's you know I can't just walk on and be like annoyed at her for not knowing what to do with that you know that's just you know it's it's unreasonable so um yeah I just treated the team like I would with any boat and um yeah obviously worked because that's what my job is <laughs> so. absolutely uh you know I know and you mentioned that you know there were some people on the show that were a little bit more green than others um you know this season's really it seems like everyone's really progressed a ton in this season. So if they were new, um, Sean and I are just, we really like where the season's going. We can't wait to see what happens. Obviously we've been left on a, a real cliffhanger with the, uh, you know, the, you know, the boat hitting the dock recently and, you know, without giving any spoilers, what has been your favorite part of the season so far? Oh gosh, that's a tough one. Um, I think uh, if there was, a, I think the dinner where we didn't argue and there wasn't any drama with the, the pretty sunset and um, well, there was drama after I went to bed, but that did, oh, yeah. after the dinner yeah. uh, was, you know, it was really nice, especially from the dinner beforehand. Um, I think everyone was really apprehensive and a bit nervous that was just a weird dinner before so I think that was a big highlight and we did have you know a lot of deep conversations that night and got to know everyone really well I I think you know overall my relationship with um Ali you know I loved um spending time with her and getting to know her and um, getting to know Colin as well it was a bit harder because we're in different departments but you know I have a lot of time for Colin and yeah I think just having a really strong interior team and not, you know, having major, any major, you know, messes or, you know, complaints that I had to deal with. So I think there are three things that kind of, um, I enjoyed the most, but yeah, overall there was a lot of laughs and good times. Definitely. All of the crew parties on the boat are amazing. That's, yeah. a beer, that's been my favorite part. Just every time you guys are partying on the boat. <laughs> yeah we knew how to party I mean and it looks like I go to bed really early by the way I'm in bed by like 1 a.m yeah. <laughs> like someone said it and they're like god you go to bed so early and I'm like it was like 1 a.m plus we're working the next day plus there's no music so we're just sat there talking around talking in the circle of the same bullshit I was like no I'm going to bed it wasn't like 8 p.m it was late um so yeah but the we knew how to party and it was um a lot of fun and it was a lot of fun for me because the arguments only happened after i went to bed so right, yeah. i never, uh, got involved in that stuff so yeah we definitely yeah everyone was a, a good partier for sure oh uh, it's yeah we it's and it's showing through um i don't know if it's captain glenn just being kind of lax and you know not really caring what people do in the off hours as long as they get things done but uh, I think the the chemistry that's created on the boat so far has been fantastic. Um, so Daisy, I really want to, you know, just say thank you for taking some time here today. Um, you know, I know we mentioned the, the, the PETA party um, and just wanted to, you know, ask is, is there any other avenues where people can find you on social media? What's your handles? Um, and just so, you know, make sure everyone can, can follow along. Um, for sure, at the moment, I'm just on Instagram, Daisy Kelleher 87 my surname's Kelleher, um, Twitter, which I think is the same, and yeah, we have Pitta Party, IGTV, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll kind of expand, um, 
I guess <laughs> now that we see people like us and don't want to <laughs> don't want to like run their car over us and <laughs> you know we'll, we'll put our face out there a bit more and yeah um you know obviously we're getting busy as well with work and Danny has her baby coming but um hopefully yeah we'll we'll continue the IGTV after um uh, the kind of season ends maybe do a podcast or something but yeah at the moment that Instagram and Twitter yeah definitely everyone check out Peter Party Oh, Daisy, we weren't sure uh, your last name. So it's Kelleher. You pronounce the I. Yes, Kelleher. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, I want to say, I know you're, you said you didn't like hearing your voice. Me and John love your accent. <laughs> it's like the best part of the show. So don't be embarrassed about that. Oh, thank you very much. I know, I got, I like seeing people and they're like, your voice is awesome. I was like, oh my god is this like a thing that I've been walking around for 33 years and people are like god she needs to stop talking but I think it's uh one of those voices or accents or whatever like I've had some people I was dating a guy and he like would be like just talk to me when we're going to sleep and he's like I really wish you'd do like an audio book so I can fall asleep to it <laughs> he was like it's so soothing I was like oh okay <laughs> so <laughs> Well, well, we're not falling asleep while, while you're talking, uh, <laughs> but but we very much enjoy it. And uh, we very much enjoyed the season. Uh, as as Sean mentioned, we do feel like you're the, the main character. I know you mentioned your role isn't to necessarily uh, manage Natasha, but I feel like you're kind of managing everything right now. Um, and so we, we can't wait to see what happens with the rest of the season. You know, we personally hope that you're a you're a staple on the below deck sailing yacht um, for years to come. And um, we just can't wait to see what happens. And we just want to thank you so much for taking some time here to, uh, to talk to us. Yeah, it's, You're so welcome. This is maybe the best season ever. So <laughs> <laughs> we knew it was going to be good though. Like I was, you know, during the show, I was like, wow. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a good show. But um, yeah, we had a lot of fun and, it was it was an awesome experience and you know we we were a really good team as well so I think that's what's so great about the show this season in particular is that not only were we a good team but we also knew how to party and and constantly trying to find um that common ground with everyone so you know it, ju it definitely wasn't boring and and it shouldn't be Odding's a pretty exciting place and I'm glad that's coming across so I'm glad you guys are enjoying it, Anna. Hopefully you still like me at the end. We still have a few more episodes. I'm like, oh God, when am I going to mess up? We'll see, Daisy. But so far, no, so far it's been fantastic. Um, we, we can't imagine we'll, ch we'll change our opinion for anything. So, um, you know, really, again, just thank you so much for joining. And, you know, we're going to keep watching and, you know, we'll check up. Sean's already been checking out the pita party. I've been checking it out as well. And, uh, yeah, we can't wait to see what happens. And, you know, hopefully maybe after the season, we can have you on again and just kind of take another download and uh, see what happens from there. Love that. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, Daisy. Good luck with uh, the new charter. Thank you very Thanks. much. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to today's interview. First off, we want to thank Daisy for taking time out of her day to jump on with us. We also want to thank the listeners and the rest of the Kiki and Kibitz platform. As you know, this is our first season on the platform, so thank you for making us feel like home. From the ratings you leave to the listener submitted life advice you send, thanks for making us feel like part of the community. Yeah. I want to ask listeners to please subscribe, rate, and review where you found us. If you're on Instagram, follow Kiki and Kibitz to keep up on all the Bravo action. If you want to reach out to us directly, you can follow Sean at Sacco24142, and I'm at John Farley XC. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Bon voyage.